Welcome everyone. I'm Michael Tilson Thomas. I'm very happy to have a few moments to speak with you about a brief introduction to conducting and some thoughts that uh, have occurred to me over the years, many things that were transmitted to be my, my major teacher, uh, Ingolf Dahl, and also many other thoughts that I've gathered by watching many people and also by doing a fair amount of this of myself, making some mistakes and trying to learn from the mistakes that I made and hoping to give you a clue into those things which I think worked the best and most purposefully and how we can spend a little time in anticipation of our meeting in person, talking about some situations, conducting in general, and then the specific musical situations that we're going to encounter in these pieces by Haydn and Brahms. Let me start by saying a few words about conducting in general. What I believe is the most important to recognize in being a conductor is that a conductor is there to help those who are really making the music to do what they do absolutely the best. A conductor is like a combination of a coach, of a director, sometimes a teacher, certainly someone who must represent primarily a force of great encouragement, sometimes a force of caution, and who is always present to give the performers that important extra perspective, the perspective which is someone who is slightly in and outside of the music, who is able to watch and listen to someone who is deeply engaged in playing all of these many hundreds, thousands of notes that come up. And in the same way, a director in the theater would offering them the perspective of how is this coming across? How could you make what you do clearer? How could our intentions be more unified? And also from the perspective of what a coach in athletics does, making suggestions as to how all of this could accomplish, be accomplished less effortly, with less effort, with a more sense of unified purpose. When the conductor stands before the orchestra, he tries to stand there with an attitude which is one of quiet authority based on really knowing the music and also being able to communicate with as few interruptions as possible the most specific information about what is happening and what needs to happen to make the music as vivid as it needs to be. When you're a young conductor, there is that difficulty sometimes in listening, in hearing what really is going on, and in being able to pinpoint exactly what needs to happen in order to make it better. The primary way you have of influencing all of these things is through the beat itself. And before we start, I want to offer a few comments about the way the beat works. First of all, as you know, Ingolf used to say, you can learn everything that you need to know about conducting in very few seconds because there are only so many possibilities, the three basic possibilities in conducting. You can only beat in a few ways, up and down, which generally makes the music go quicker and or possibly more marcato and more staccato, from side to side, which makes the music in general become more sustained and possibly slower, forward, away from you, which causes the music in general to become louder, and back towards you, which signals that the music should become quieter. So only these three beat possibilities, up, down, side to side, back and forth, everything else is just a combination of applying these principles in different and sometimes sophisticated ways. But listen, it's not nuclear physics we're talking about here. It's a very fundamental concept of the way time is represented by the conductor who is leading the ensemble. The beat itself is a representation of time. It is a representation of the length of now that unites the musical principles. Sometimes a beat can be a very quick thing. It can be bop, 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 or it can be a longer pulse, beam, bom, 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 beam, bom, or any variation more exaggerated, even those two examples. 
But the beat itself most ideally describes the actual time. And where that must focus is in the stick itself. I encourage you to become comfortable in using a stick, which is a very efficient and excellent tool and will allow you to have a much greater vocabulary of movement once you actually become comfortable with it. The idea is the stick is in front of you. The beat that the orchestra needs to see is not over here, it's not back here, it's not coming from the shoulder or the elbow or some other part of your body, it must come from the stick itself. And the stick moves through space and describes two things, the length of the beat and the specific ictus, the moment where one beat ends and the other one begins. especially in giving an upbeat, this is vitally important. An upbeat is part of the piece. It is a breath. It is the breath that causes the music to begin. It's part of the composition. Giving this is an essential part of what a conductor must do. And that moment of focus when the conductor is going to transmit what is the opening impulse for the piece is important and a tricky thing sometimes to grasp onto. The beat, as I say, is a representation of a length of time and a specific moment where that moment of time is cut and the next instant begins, the ictus of the beat. I found it helpful to try and represent that in terms of again, planes, in this case, a physical plane. If for the moment we're going to say that this plane represents the space, the time of the upbeat, watch how this works. The beat comes along, starts, moves along the plane, and then releases. So the length of this beat is in a slow tempo, there, and one, and one, or, and one, and one, four, one, four, one. But you can practice that idea of the actual time of the beat and then the ending of it. Find it first on a table and then gradually move it up into space. It's harder to feel it first up here in space, but it's the same principle. Four, one. Four, one. Four, one. Four, one. And then, of course, in four, four, the other parts of the beat. One, two, three, four. The beat is lined up as much as possible with the eyes. So your eyes and your stick move a lot of the time together. Follow me. We move this way, we move that way. Much more powerful this than this. At the plane of the beat, two, three, four. One, two, three. You'll notice how important this is when seen from the side that the planes, vertical or horizontal, are kept as clear as possible. If the beat is allowed to go up from the side, it can be very confusing. One, two, three, four. This way from the side, it's much clearer for the players where the upbeat actually is, which is the design of the beat pattern. It's really important as you concentrate on this that you remember that a lot of people are sitting in very strange perspectives relative to you and to the music. If you're someone way out on the fringes of the orchestra, at a certain moment it can be very helpful to be able to look up and interpret easily where the conductor is, where the 
time of the beat is, where the ictus of the beat as a rallying point in the ensemble. Vertical motions, smaller space this way, more space this way, faster, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, more, three, four, more lateral, slower, more sustained, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, this way, louder, this way, softer. It's these same simple, simple principles over and over again. Small motions basically on a vertical axis, one, two, three, four, one, two, quicker. Broader motions on a broad axis, on the horizontal axis, slower, three, four, one, two, three, four, this way, louder, this way, quieter. The other thing you should try and work on is imagining that the genesis of the beat can come from different portions of your body. You should become comfortable in letting the beat come from your fingertips. One, two, three, four, just coming from your fingers. Or from your wrist. Two, three, four, one, two. Or from your forearm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Or from your whole arm. This way, this will lead you to a vocabulary of being, even without having to think about it. Different portions of your body being used to signal more clearly not only the position of the beat, but the character that you want it to have. Again and again in this time together, I'll be coming back to remind you of these basic principles and also the way that when you're stuck wondering how should you be helpful to the orchestra, how can you indicate to them what is necessary, you can come back to those basic principles. Are you trying to make it go quicker, more marcato, more sustained, slower, louder, softer? What is the deal and how does that take you always back to the guiding principles which are always the same in every diverse musical situation. So now, we've said that, we'll come back to that. Let's go to the piano and look at a little bit of Haydn. <laughs> 